Okay. And I can say I equal to, and then curly bracket I, which basically takes a value. Uh, remember anything that, that is dynamic, that is state related, you need to use curly brackets, right? Everything else is static. So it, it does something like this. So how does this really, how does this really work? So there are two phases, remember. Initially, when you load your HTML, when your application, uh, your application is going to load um, the, the non-dynamic um, non uh, items. So this doesn't get loaded right away, right? So it first loads, loads the thing and then it, um, it, it renders this, I in, it injects the I inside, right? And then so um, you would see the value of I here. Okay, um, so there is this paint process. What is a paint? So think of this screen as, a, as something that is get painted, right? Which is the truth, because every time you change something, this screen is repainted, right? With the, with the new information. Um, that process is dynamic and um, also asynchronous. Uh, what does asynchronous really mean? Which means while something is happening, you can finish that process, right? It doesn't block anything. Um, so for example, let's say if I'm um, teaching here, right? And if I, if I um, need some milk um, or a sandwich, let's say if I told one of my kids, hey, go get this, uh, get the sandwich, right? So they're gonna go and um, go to the store and get the sandwich. So when I order them to get the sandwich, do I have the sandwich right away in my hands? No. Uh, they're gonna go to the store, get the sandwich and come back. So there's this time that is happening. Meanwhile, I, I may have um, finished one chapter here, right? Um, so I, if, I wanted to, if I wanted to say, okay, um, I wanted to eat the sandwich, after, um, or I wanted to do something after I finish eating the sandwich, right? Once I have the sandwich, I need to know when am I gonna get the sandwich, right? Uh, and once that event happens, then I can make a decision to eat it or not, or do something, right? Um, so use effect actually tells you when your screen is painted with the new information, okay? Uh, whether it's the first time like this or any time when you change it, right? So obviously there's a first time when he, when he paints this, right? I is inserted inside the screen dynamically, right? And then there is a, uh, every time, so if I have a button, um, let's have a button. All add, right? And then we can have an um, event here on click equal to, um, I can say add handle, all right? And here we can define that handle. So it's gonna be a function add handle, which is going to be doing nothing but uh, increment the i. So I can just set i equal to i plus one, which means whatever the value is i is, just added by, incremented by one. Um, so if I now did that, what happens is, and this is, this is what you want to pay attention, right? Um, when I click on add, it changed the value from zero to one, right? What if I wanna do something when the value changes? There are a lot of times when you wanna do that, right? These are simple applications that we're building. When we build a complex application, we need to rely on information, certain information where you can say, hey, when this happens, do this. This happens, do this. Right now, I have no idea when I is updated, okay? So uh, let me give you an example. 
I said set I equal to I plus one, which means if it was zero, it would come one, right? But if I just console log I here, and I can say I equal to, equal to I, something like this. Okay. And let me just restart this. The console this, right? And if I just click on add, it says, it says I equal to zero, which is called after the set I. So I'm expecting that I is supposed to be one, right? From zero to one, but it's actually not. It's still zero. Why is this happening? It's happening because Remember I told you, set I is almost like go and paint that wall with this new information. It's not gonna be painted right away. This is an asynchronous process, which means it's gonna do, it's gonna go and paint the, the screen and update this information. But in meanwhile, while it's painting, this code would execute, right? Which means, it's guaranteed that this is going to happen before this, right? And that's why there's a lag. So now, now it's one, right? But if I click again, it will. it's supposed to be two here, right? But it says one here, which means there's a lag. It's because, um, you know, as I said, it takes time. And so if you call it right away, it gives you the previous value, right? And this is the most important thing to understand in React, how React updates the screen. It's not a rocket science. You just need to re remember that it doesn't do it right away. So if I really want to know when the screen is updated, I need to rely on this other um, hook. Uh, this is called a hook, by the way. Use state is a hook. Anything that starts with use is a hook. Um, then I need to create um, another I need to call another um, event called use effect. Okay, what use effect does? Use effect basically um, lets me know when certain values are updated. So, and the way to call this is usually you call it up here right after the state, and you would say use effect. And inside there's a function, right? Um, so this one will be called every time when there is a change on the screen. So if I just say console, console log change, right? I'm not even going to put the value of I in anything. See, when I, when I, when I run it, it's already changed twice. Why? Because the first time when the screen loaded, the second time when I is loaded. So it actually printed, painted twice, right? Then if I click on add, it's going to call it again, change. So every time I do this, it changes, right? This, this really means anytime something changes, the screen is painted, call this. So this effect, when I call inside here, this lets me know when something's changed. Okay. Um, and then what if I want to say, oh, I don't really care when things are changes. I just want to know when I is changing or I is painted, right? Because there may be some other stuff. There may be another button called J and Y and whatnot. And if I click on it, I don't want to know if they are changed. I only want to know when I is changing. So in that case, you'll pass another argument here and you pass I here. Okay. And what this does, it tells me that when actually I changes. In this case, it's the same as the previously because this is the only thing we have. But let's say if I, if I have another uh, variable, then this would not run. So I can monitor a specific thing. Uh, so I can say, oh, this is changed or that that is changed by passing this, okay? So if I don't supply anything, so let's write it down here. 
if there is no argument, if no argument, um, this means, you know, call every time something changes. Right? If I don't pass any argument. If I pass an argument like this, but don't put anything inside, which means it only runs the first time cha it changes. So let's click. Let's clean this up. Where is the? You see, the first time things change, it ran, and after that, did I, where did I put this? Oh, let me do this right. See, it's not running this change now, right? Because I'm saying this means I don't run it any time. You just this is only the first time. So if the argument is empty array, if empty array argument, right? It calls on initial load. And after that, it doesn't run again, right? As you noticed that if I change this, nothing's happens here. Um, what if I do I, right? Then this means if um, specific, if specific argument, or, or, I don't know, and then calls when those variable changes or those state changes, right? Plus initial. So this is initial plus when those variable change, which means this is going to be either, um, it's all like a combination of this and this, right? So it runs an initial and then this as well. Any questions? All right. How about everyone type this in? Let me, if you haven't done so. Let's let's try this and just play around with it. Let me know how how it goes or if you have any questions. It's important to play around with this. I'm just gonna leave it here. I'll be back in a second.
All right, anyone still working on it? Yeah, this requires practice. I think you can't, you can't just do it. You can't just learn the theory. You have to really, um, you know, code and try yourself, right? Okay, I'm assuming is everyone everyone's done. So let's move forward. Um, let's create another state. Okay, and then we can we will know if if our theory really works. It's not a theory, but you know, uh, let's see, let's see if it works. So I'm gonna create another state called J, and this will be set J equal to use state zero, right? Um, and then I will have, I just remove this H1 so it's less code. Um, and I'm gonna have also J here. So I'll say J equal to J, right? And then similarly, I can have another button, um, this call, add j handle i may have to change add i handle and i j handle right so this will i will say add i handle right and then there'll be another one similar to this that would say i add j handle this will be j plus this will be set j which will be j plus one. All right. So, well, also I just call this add i. So, so if I just click on i, it adds i. If I click on j, it adds j, right? All right. So, if you if you notice, here's the change. Um, the change, the count is 18 right now, right? So if I click on J, you would notice that it's not updating here, right? Why is it not updating? Because um, I have created the situation where it says only monitor I. So it's not monitoring J, right? So let's say I changed. We can say something like this, right? Uh, let's refresh this. So when I click on I, you can see I has changed. When I click on J, nothing happens, right? So then I write another one. And this time it will say J. Let's say J changed, right? So now, Initially, they both run. Let's just refresh it, right? It does twice, remember, because the first time, um, it's not that I change or J change. First time when the page loads, it runs. Then it, it initially sets the value of I, and then it sets the value of J. So that's why you see two, right? Which is fine. Now, if I cl click on I, you see it says I changed but J change is not happening. So it's not monitoring. Now, if I say J, you can see that J is happening, right? So this tells me that if I wanna monitor whichever um, state I wanna monitor, if I have multiple states, then I would need to provide that inside this array. Is that clear? I think, you know, you need to understand this because then you can control if you don't understand this, then what's gonna happen? You're gonna be doing a lot of trial and error. And in code in in um, in the coding coding world, trial and error works, but it just it just so much takes it takes so much of your time. And also sometimes you don't consider the um, results that that you're supposed to, you know, clearly think, right? So it doesn't work. Um, you know, as expected. 
All right. Um, okay. What if I want to do, what if I want to say, okay, I want to check, I want to say I and J change or J change, right? Not, which means either changes, right? Um, but if you have another, another, another variable called K, then I want to ignore K, but I only want to say if I and J, because I don't want to do like, if I have like five of these, I don't want to write five of these. Um, if I want to monitor all of them together, right? So in that case, I can simply do this, I and J, and I don't need, I don't really need the second one, right? So this monitors both of them. So I can say I and J changed. So when I click on I, see, you just notice here, this, this number changes, right? Five here, six here, see, it's updating. So um, if you want to monitor multiple of them, you can write this way. Any questions? OK, um, I would suggest let's type this in and just remember this obviously right this rules if i don't provide any arguments which means anything changes it works if i if i have an empty argument empty array uh, empty array argument sorry empty array argument which means there is some dependency but i don't know which one it is then it only calls it initial load but if i have a specific argument then it runs when that specific state changes, right? Okay, now let's change. Let's uh, let's do a little fun now. What I want to do now is when I click on add i, I want j to change as well, right? How do I do that? Any idea? So when I click on I, but I don't want to call, um, I, yes, I want to call J, but I want to know, uh, I want to automatically uh, do this, right? Um, I don't want to do this. I want. I don't want to just inside the handle, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to change J once the, I is changed, which means I need to know what's first I is changed, and that should trigger change of J. So it's it's a, there's a dependency, right? Any idea how to change that? When do I know? that I has, I has changed. We just learned, right? I hope you guys are not sleeping. <laughs> when do I know that I has changed? Anyone? Okay. All right. Good. So Rahim said calling on I, okay. So if I just simply pass this, this really means I has changed, right? So now uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove this handle, which means, um, and also remove this handle as well. Well, I don't wanna remove it. I'm just gonna comment it. Okay, so now, right now, I is changing, J is not changing. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say here, I already know I has changed, but I don't know if it actually changed. It, it was from the initial load because this runs twice, once on an initial load and once when I is changed 
right? So how do I know if I has changed? Here, how do I know? I know that this would run, this, this runs twice, remember. This runs on initial level, and this would also run when some when the I changes, right? How do I know that I has changed inside here? Because then I'm gonna trigger this, right? I already know a hint is I already know what the initial value of zero is, zero, uh, I is, right? So if it's different than zero, then I know I has changed, sort of. If, if I'm only doing plus, if I'm doing minus, then it is possible that I, I but in this case, I could, I could tell that if, if I is uh, not equal to zero, which means I has changed, right? In that case, I can say um, set J equal to I. Okay, why is it complaining? Oh, I need triple only. Right? So let's see how it works. So if I say, if I just click on here, I is one, J is one, you see, they're synchronized now. Obviously this changes first before this. It's very hard to see, but that is the reality, okay? Hey, Andrew. So we are, we are looking at uh, something called use uh, effect. And use effect is um, nothing but a function or hook that tells us when something has changed, right? So um, this is the example of use effect. And I have a function inside, I've passed a function inside and then and I have a dependency, which is a second argument. And so use of X says, hey, uh, let me know when something changes in this, uh, this area. Um, so I need to first, you know, um, check whether um, that value is actually changed because remember, a use effect calls on initial load and when something changes, which means, you know, I don't want to um, update J, uh, you know, right away. So for example, let's say if I say five, update J to five and I changes, right? So when I click on it, J is five, which makes sense. But if I don't put this condition and I put outside, I just say, when I changes, make J equal to five, right? What's gonna happen? Even though I hasn't changed, J is five. That is because this also runs on an initial load. And so this is confusing, right? So I wanna make sure that I is actually moved from zero to something else. So that's why I put this condition. Got it? So, Within the use effect, always put some sort of condition that that to determine whether it's an initial call, initial load, or um, uh, on change. Right? It may be confusing in the beginning, but you know, once you once you go, uh, you know, more and more, um, I will know. I'm gonna put this here in the chat so that everyone can practice it. Yeah, I think if you can if you can conquer the concept of use state and then use effect, you pretty much know know React. Obviously there are there are more to it, but you know, I think those two concepts are very important. Okay, so I want you to uh, pay special attention to the both of these concepts. And using this you can build pretty much any website, right? Because this will give you really power of making things dynamic. 
All right. Um, so I give you an example, right? Now let's do something. Um, when you say I, add I, right? Um, let's do such that initially I is zero and J is zero. Right now, if I just click on it, it becomes five, right? What I want you to do is it will sync. It will sync, which means I J will become I, but not right away. So initially, right now they are synced, right? So what I wanted to do is once I hits five, J becomes five. Until then, J would be zero. So initially they are zero. So if I click add I, J should be zero. Two, J should be still zero, zero, zero. And when it five become five, then they're both synchronized. And after that, it will become, you know, whatever I is, J would follow, right? So what changes can I make here uh, to achieve that? These are very small exercises, but they're very meaningful. This will give you a lot of power. Uh, later on, we later on in the class, we will build a couple of um, games. Uh, I think we've got a lot of time to build games, right? Um, so we'll build, we'll pick one one of the games which nobody has picked, and then we'll build it, um, and we'll use uh, all of the tools that we learned here. So let me know once you're done, you know, how, how this use effect look like, looks like. And just play around with it to see what impact. It's this tiny function, but it, it has a huge impact. This is like a gateway to dynamic things, right? And you always must visualize react as a you know like an engine that updates a screen right and always think of it as, as a dynamic which where react has to go and update it right and then it comes back and let's you know oh this this is updated then you can say okay yeah if this is updated then i'm going to do something else right and that's where the use effect comes in the picture So I provided a link in the in the chat. You can use it and modify it to, you know, to 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 build that functionality. All right, any ideas? Yes, tried it, work, did not work. And remember, programming is all about trial and error, right? So um, if you're confused, always try something. Right? Whatever comes in your head first, just try it. It may work, right? 
So, um, if you're still working on it, I can wait for a few minutes. And if you're not, then we can move. move. So the objective is sync I with J, but only if when I hits five, value five. Uh, do you mind copying, copy pasting it into the chat? I tried to press the link and it didn't like open up. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, let me see if it works. Copy paste works. Um, Sometimes it doesn't work, but let's just see. Okay, it did work. And then since a uh, few of you are here, let's just build some interesting functionality. So we're gonna build a timer, um, a, ti a clock basically um, that goes, you know, um, or what is it called? The, the stop timer, right? You, you start at some place and then you say, okay, uh, stop here, right? So we're gonna build a stop timer. And as I say, cool thing about React is it's so um, simple in nature. Yeah, the syntax is a little complex. You know, everything is hard until you understand it, right? So, um, but once you grasp the idea, at least a couple of idea about states and effects, um, everything else is just a cosmetic things, right? If I wanna build an application then I need to understand some HTML and CSS. Um, but everything that is dynamic, I can just build it using this. All right. Um, anyone? You can copy paste that and see if it if it works and then modify the content of use effect here. All right, um, anyone still working? Otherwise we'll move forward. All right, okay. So the idea was if, if I is hits five and then you wanna sync, then you simply need to do is if I is greater than equal to five. Right, that's all you need to do, which means once it's five, then start syncing. That's it. Until then, it doesn't run. Right. So one, two, three, four, five. Then it syncs. Okay. Um. All right. 
let's introduce delay. So why delay? So right now we don't see that it's it's syncing, but there's you know it happens right away as if I'm adding in both, right? So let's introduce uh, some delay. How to introduce a delay? So we're gonna learn something new called set timeout. So there's a function called set timeout. So this has two two components. One is basically if I want to run something, I would say run this function which is an arrow function, right? After this millisecond. And if you don't know, um, the, diff the millisecond is basically um, one thousandth of a second, right? So if I wanna say one second, I have to say thousand milliseconds, right? So if I wanna run something that, you know, that is has a delay, then I would create a function like you know, set timeout, and then I would just put something here. Okay, so let's use this. And instead of setting J here, I'm gonna set J here. Okay. So what's gonna happen now? When I click on it, click on I. I will get updated because of the set state here, right? Then once it's finished updated, this would run, right? Um, it will check, is I greater than five? If it's not, it's not gonna run anything. Once I hits five, then it will run the set timeout. So which means it's not gonna update right away, but there'll be a delay of one second, okay? So I'm gonna do this, one, two, three, four, five. I updated it, but it there's a delay. If I do, let's say five seconds, which is a longer delay, then you would see it, one, two, three, four, five. All right, my went to six. You see there's a five second delay for the first one, yeah. Right? So this, the set timeout is a very useful function. It lets me know, it, it lets me control the time, right? Which is a great, great thing. Um, so let's do this. Um, what I wanna do now is when J is set, after the one, one second, it will, um, Let's do something interesting. Um, once it hits five, when I is five, set J to be um, I plus one, which means, you know, it's one more than um, uh, I, right? So let's do this. Two, three, four, five. So J is going to be six. And then once J is six, when J changes, I want to change automatically I. And this time I want to do one more. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create another use effect here. Use effect. And I'm going to say, this time I want to monitor J, right? Not I. And here I'm gonna do the same thing because I wanna make sure that I is, if J is not equal to zero, right? Because I don't want this to be an initial value. In this case, I wanna do the same thing, set timeout, which means it's gonna, one sec, one, it's gonna wait one second after it's the J is updated. Right, and then there'll be a delay of, let's say, one second. Let's just change this to both to one second. And this time I wanna set I to J um, plus one, right? Which means this is one more than um, J. 
So this is going to be interesting. So when I change I, nothing happens, right? Until it hits five. All right, now let's see what happens. See, they are impacting each other because as I said, if I, it's a mirror effect. I say, if I changes, change J, and if J changes, change I, and I'm doing plus one, which means it's gonna be always more, right? So I didn't even do any um, kind of auto increment. It just changing every one, uh, one second, right? So this is really cool. You can do a lot of cool things like this, right? With using this kind of functionality. Let me put this code so you can copy paste it. All right. And this will this this will go forever until the end of time, right? If I don't close the browser. Because I told it to just follow this pattern, which means it's gonna just keep doing it, right? So now I'm I'm showing you what is what is a possibility. And then this use effect function really is helpful in order to change something, right? Once I know something is finished, I can do something else, right? And that, that thing is very powerful. Having a delay really helps because if I, if I hadn't put the delay, then what would happen is the thing is will be so fast that you will not see it. And eventually you will have some sort of um, um, error because it would reach such a high number, right? Um, that, so let's say if this page takes, I don't know, a milli, less than a millisecond to update which means within a second, this I can go from zero to thousand, right? And a second, another second, it could be in a 2000, right? So you, you would know, you can see how fast this would move. So that's why having a delay, definitely you can control things more, right? And you can try changing this one second to five second or something like that to see exactly you know how you can um, what changes your what how you can control it. Any question on this one? All, all right. So if you don't have any questions, let's just build a, a clock or a, or a timer that goes, you know, a stopwatch in a way. Let's think of it as a stopwatch, right? So let's build that. So I'm gonna clean this up. Right. Let's code with me so that this way we can we can do things uh, together, right? Okay, so I want to build a, a, a clock, a, a stopwatch. So what does a stopwatch? If you open your phone, you will have a stopwatch, right? So um, I open the clock and then there's a stopwatch, right? So if you look at, there's a start and there's a stop, right? And reset. 
Okay, so let's build that. But instead of time, we're just gonna, it's gonna just go one, two, three, four. We're not gonna use time, actual time. Though you could build a time, but we're not gonna do that, right? So what it will do uh, to, to make things simpler, right? So have let's have a stay first. Const i set i equal to use stay, right? And then we're gonna start from zero, all right? So make sure you code with me. Obviously you need to import use state and use effect. And make sure that when you when you work on something, right? Save the for, save it. If you're logged in, you can save it. I'm not logged in, so I can't save, but you know, you should be able to save it. Okay. So stopwatch has two things. It has two buttons. One is um, a start and a reset, right? So if I look on my phone and I have a start button and that start button becomes stop. There's a lap, lap as well. We, we're not gonna worry about the lap, but um, there is a start, stop and a reset, right? So I'm going to have two buttons here. One is button, and this one is reset. And another button would be start. And then we're gonna have I, so we can say H, H1, and then within the curly brackets, because it's a state, we are putting it like this, right? So now we have a timer. So what happens is when I click on start, it should start incrementing from zero, one, two, three, four, like that, right? But that start button should have, uh, should become stop button once the counter is started. Why? Because that should allow me to stop it at a given time, right? So uh, how do I achieve that? Um, so let's just first think about the start button, right? Let's not worry about how to stop it or all that, we can add that functionality. What reset does is basically whatever number is, it sets i equal to zero, right? That's it. So um, we can actually create two events and get used to this kind of syntax. Um, you know, usually when I on click curly brackets, I can say start handle, right? And this one will be on click. equal to curly bracket, um, reset handle, all right? And then I can build those. And obviously this is nothing but a function, start handle, right? And then the second function is reset handle, right? Let's write this, please. All right, so now when I click on the start button, um, what I wanna do is I wanna increment I, right? That is simple. So 
start button, all it does, it's set I to I plus one, right? That's it, that's all it does. Okay. But once that's done, I want I to increment automatically to two and three and four on um, given interval, right? In this case, it's gonna be one second. So what we can do here is we need to know when I is updated. So I say set I, which means at some points, I is gonna be updated to from zero to one, right? So then we're gonna take that value. So we're gonna figure out when, that's ha when that happens. And once that happens, we can take that value and increment it again. And that's gonna trigger again the, the another um, use effect, right? So we need to build a use effect here. And then we're gonna put I as a dependency, right? Which means I wanna monitor I. But I also want to make sure that i is not zero when this runs. So I would say if i is greater than zero, then I want to uh, set i equal to i plus one. But don't don't do that yet, because that remember that creates this, this infinite trigger, right? I'm checking i and I'm I'm updating it, right? It's almost like a, if you say, when I take a bite of some food, after I take a bite, I wanna take another bite. If you do that, there'll be an infinite biting, right? Because you will never stop because the condition is, if you take a bite, you have to take another bite, right? Which means that another bite will take another bite and then it's all wrong. So you need set timeout, right? And then what this would do, Again, the set timeout has two things, um, a function and an interval. So I'm gonna put the interval should be thousand, which means one second, right? And here I would just again say set i is i plus one. Okay. So first, when I click on start, it increments from zero to one. Then I'm watching this. I say, okay, when it's not zero, which means whenever it turns one, right? I want you to increment I, but not right away after one second. So when I click on start, it updates I after one second, and then it keeps going. One thing I need to make sure that I also, when I start, I also want the delay because when I click on it, it turns on right away. So ideally I would like also set time out here as well. So, but we, we're not gonna worry about it. Okay. How do we, um, how do we do reset button? A reset button is pretty simple. All you do is set i is zero, that's it. And remember here it says, if i is greater than zero, then this would actually not happen, right? So it will, it will stop, that's it. Well, so let's start this and then reset it. Why this is happening, any idea? So when I said reset, right? Why this is happening? Why it's keep continuing when I do this, it becomes zero and this goes back again. What's happening here?
because what's happening here is that when I start, let's say at a given point, it says set I equal to 20, right? In meanwhile, if I set reset equal to reset, which means it turns zero, but that previous previous one, which where I said, oh, set to I equal to, it's the, the verdict is out, right? Which means even though I convert it into zero, it now, it now, uh, you know, uh, it will keep going, right? So this is not good, right? Because the nature of things is like, if I, it's almost like, you know, I send somebody to get a sandwich. And then I say, if I don't have sandwich, uh, I'm going to do some, you know, something, right? But then a few minutes later, the sandwich arrives. So whatever I did, it's, it's gone because now I actually have a sandwich, right? So that's what's happening here, that even though I set, set I equal to zero, when that executes, the previous execution of set timeout hasn't finished, and that finishes later on, and then the value is automatically changed here, right? So that's impacting. So what we need to do is we need another st status here, some some status um, cause cause paused or something, or uh, started set started. to use state and this is false which means initially it's not started right and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say um if it's started and if it started, then only said, right? So I can say, if I is greater than zero, and and started, then run this. Otherwise, don't run this, right? Which means the start, now it's, things gets really complex, right? Um, so when I do start handle, I would not only set I equal to I plus one, but I would also say set uh, started equal to true, right? And when I do reset, I would also do set started equal to false. Right, which means this will prevent you from, it, it will prevent from, um, in, so when I do reset, it stops, right? So I also need to put this here. Oh. Um, I can also say this, if um, not started, then set i is zero. Right. So you really have to draw a diagram of what really is happening, right? Because this can get really complex um, as you build this, right? Any question on this one? Let me paste this code. And I, I want you to just regurgitate on this 
information, right? To understand exactly what's happening. And then you will clearly understand um, when you build any game, right? You want this kind of situation where you, you, um, you, you need to control because you, you, let's say you have a game where it started and you have multiple things that go going, right? And you say stop, but then the things are still going. Um, it will be harder to, to do that. So you need also not only reset the state, but also need to put a, um, a situation where you can say started or, or ended, right? So if, if the started is false, which means clean up everything, right? Any question? You guys are very quiet today. Okay, what kind of things can you, what kind of things uh, you can do with this kind of, uh, with this ease effect? Any ideas? You already know you can do some, when something happens, you can do something, right? Um, which is great, right? So I can actually build some animation where there are like five dots, let's say, and those dots are gonna be executing one by one, right? Automatically. So I can do some animation where things are moving, keep moving in infinite loop if I wanna do that, right? Um, if, I, if I build a game where something's supposed to move around, right? Based on the location, I can do that, that as well. There are lots of possibilities with this, with this one. Okay. Um, stop in a way, a pause. If I want to build, so let's let's do this. You guys have this this code, right? Um, I think this. I don't want to cover anything else because this is such an important piece. Um, what I wanted to do is give you a homework um, to build a stop. Uh, so stop button. So what happens when I start this, it keeps going like this, right? So this button, as soon as I start, this button should, should become a stop button, which means when I stop it, it should stop at given number, which means if it was, let's say 17, it would just pause at 17, right? And then again, if I click on it and then the button should convert into start, just like the feature that you have on your phone, right? It should continue again. And then reset, reset would make it zero, right? So um, I want you to build that kind of functionality. I think until you play around with it, um, you would not know. Okay, so uh, what I want you to do is modify the code that I've given here. And um, in order to build a start and stop, you have to obviously, you know, do uh, conditional rendering. So if, you know, if I, if I'm, if the game is started, then the button would be stopped. If the game is stopped, the button would be start, right? Um, and then <clears throat> you need to pause. So which means you need to have some some sort of condition here, which will um, let you pause. Any any questions on this one? Okay, um, I think for that, you can actually, so we can actually end early today. You can actually go and build this functionality yourself and then maybe next class, um, let me know how, how did you do this, right? Um, I think, you know, playing around with it would require some, some understanding and I want you to really, 
see, uh, kind of visualize. And if you can't visualize it, draw it, right? Say, okay, if I, if I have this button, I click here, what really happens? So this zero gets painted here. And then in the middle, if I stop it, what really happens, right? And then you need to, that will give you much more control over um, um, what, what you're trying to do here, right? Because user effect is very complex. It, it's a simple concept, but it gets very complex when you involve multiple things, right? When, when, when you're monitoring something, you know, or when you, when you use also set timeout, when you, when you say, oh, go change this. And suddenly while it's being changed and then you say, oh, after a few minutes, right? And then in, in, the, in the middle, you change it to something else. That thing that you said it's gonna happen after a few minutes will happen, right? And that's why we were seeing this weird delay and then it's setting back the original value, right? Um, so um, that, that, that is very important. So you need to understand all of these, right? And play around with it. So I would say, if you don't know which functionality, just look at your, if you have an iPhone, um, there is a, in the clock, there is a um, stopwatch. Okay. Uh, so that's what you really want to build. Instead of the, the time, it's going to be just numbers, right? Uh, incrementing, but it's, pretty much what you're building. Um, if you are brave, you can also build a lab feature, which is reset button becomes a lab, actually, uh, which basically, I think it just circles around uh, in a lab. Oh, it actually creates, okay, it creates a, a record of lab, my bad. But anyway, you know, I would say don't worry about the lab feature because it may be a little bit complex unless you already know how to do it, right? Um, but yeah, this is the, I don't know, if, let me see. This is the kind of, a, it's blurred, but anyway, this is the, the feature that I was talking about, right? Hoping everyone's got around the phone, which I guess nowadays, Everyone do. Any questions? All right. So if there are no further questions, you know, we can we can end here. But there are a couple of things I want you to know. Uh, next next class, come back with a um, a project in mind, right? Uh, it could be a game, uh, or it could be something that you wanted to build an application. Um, and then we're gonna discuss about what you have in mind and everything, right? Because now that we have finished most of the, some of the React functionality, we also learn React, right? But this kind of should give you an idea of how to build the application. So at least simple applications, right? So think about what you wanted to build and then we can cater this course um, to, to support you in building this. Right. Um, we're gonna look at a couple of other features like user F and um, um, then we can we can start building some games and then we can learn things that requires like set timeout, uh, creating random values. Um, we can build a card game or something like that, right? Uh, this will require some randomness. Randomness and delay are pretty interesting features, right? That you're gonna be using in building any game. So we're gonna go over it. And um, yeah, um, I think building games would be fun. So uh, I think get ready for that. All right. Um, if you guys don't have any other question, but thank you for joining. I'm glad you, <laughs> I'm glad most of you joined because if you didn't, if you missed this one, this was, this, this was a pretty important class, you know, use effect, because if you miss this one, then you wouldn't be able to build any any um, complex games. So, yeah, um, we're gonna elaborate more on it on use effect and other stuff next time. All right, um, I'll see you next time, and then make sure that if you have any questions, feel free to ping in me in the Discord.
Thank you. Okay. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you, okay. guys. Bye.